Welcome back to the channel, fellow painting, modeling, wargaming enthusiasts. James here from JVC Paints with an Ancients update for you all out there in YouTube land or YouTubia. Um, this is a video showcase of my 28mm Spartan Army of 150 guys, which is a mix of Warlord games and Victrix miniatures. Um, some of these uh, units have been shown before on my channel, so I will have links below for their uh, respective uh, videos in case I don't get into enough detail for you in this video. To start off the showcase, I'm going to get into the latest two editions of the army, a command stand and a block of hoplites. About the word hoplites, which do you believe is the correct pronunciation, hoplites or hoplites? Uh, I've heard both, and seeing as a lot of pronunciation of ancient terms has been anglicized over the centuries, like Caesar and Kaiser, for example, uh, I'd like to hear what you think, so drop a comment below and let me know. First up, this block of 28 guys of hoplites or hoplites, I don't know. Uh, these are Warlord Games' as Spartans, which are basically their older Greek hoplites box with an extra sprue with an armored guy and an armored guy and enough Pylos helmets uh, or Pylos helmets to make them look like later Spartans. Uh, I used the Pylos style helmets for the cavalry units, which will be coming up here in a later, uh, but I used the Corinthian style helmets here, as you can see. Uh, the reasoning for this was twofold. First, I wanted the cavalry to really have more of a Spartan feel, so I did the head swaps. And second, I wanted to give this group their own feel. The Corinthian helmets are mostly two pieces with the crest being separate from the actual helmet. Uh, a few of them are one piece, but the way that they are on the sprue, the seam line basically obliterates the detail that m might have been on the face. You can tell the Warlord models are pretty old as they are nowhere near as detailed as their newer stuff. Um, I've heard that these were actually plastic soldier company figures uh, that were just repackaged as Warlords uh, when they brought them out. But uh, there's also a strong possibility that I'm imagining that. It might be a fever dream, I don't know. Uh, either way, the details are there, but they aren't eye-poppingly great. Um, the figures are painted up well enough, uh, and they are rather straightforward to do in a limited palette of about four main colors and then the weapons. The shields take up most of the figures, so you can probably get away with skipping some parts. Uh, I did the shields separate from the bodies and even did the backs because I'm a bit of a nerd, and I left gluing them on until the figures were on their bases and all the bases were completely finished. Now... There was a comment in one of my earlier Spartan videos where the viewer commented, and I'm paraphrasing here 100%, uh, that there was no evidence that they all painted the land on their shields. Now, according to the Osprey Elite Series number 66, the Spartan Army, Army, pardon me, by Nick Secunda, it mentions on pages 27 and 28 in the lexicon of Photius, and forgive my pronunciation there, uh, under the, the entry of Lambda. Uh, we were told that the Spartans painted this letter on their shields, and uh, Photius mentions his source as Eopolis, who was an Athenian poet who lived between uh, 446 BC and 411 BC, and with his last drama being staged in 412. So there is some certainty that it was on their shields before 412, um, and it goes to say that the letter was painted on in a uniform crimson and carried on as a practice until the third century BC. Of course. The word all implies 100%, which of course there could be no 100% certainty about shields used, you know, 2300 or so years ago. But for wargaming purposes, the lambda feels appropriate and justified. Here, I've used the color of black on a white field um, to give them that uniform look that I wanted here. The figures generally line up very well, and I was very careful on who had which weapon, um, where they were in the rank and file of the unit. I also did a little bit in the regard of the bronze armor here in the front rank. As you can see, this guy's got a cape. These other guys, I'm sorry for clipping them there. Um, uh, to make them look a little bit more organized and also with their, their plumes as well. I've got some black plumes back here and the red ones are up front. We've got a black, you know, etc., etc. Um, and uh, they're all pretty much, uh, with the exception of one Victrix guy snuck in here, the musician, this one guy in the back. They are all Warlord. Now, I made the bases myself from plastic card and the movement tray as well. Uh, I endeavored to have them based in such a way that if I wanted to reform them uh, to get them looking into a tighter spot if I was playing, uh, I could. That said, I don't think I will ever make an ancient unit without a movement tray. Uh, there is so much hassle, as I learned earlier playing against uh, my mate Giovanni, uh, that there's such a hassle moving guys, even if they're on four or six man bases, to get them across the table. Next up here, we have a command stand of three figures, which is also a Warlord. Um, I did do a bit of kit bashing here with uh, some bits from uh, Victrix. The uh, unarmored guy here, this guy right here, um, he somehow escaped from uh, the first big Warlord unit I made uh, when I started the project way back when. Um, the base is plastic hard here, and I just traced out the shape and then cut it out with some heavy-duty scissors 
Um, some of the larger rocks you can see on the base here, these little bits and pieces here, are from the Acropolis in Athens. Again, uh, I stuck with the Corinthian helmets here uh, just for aesthetics. The Warlord kit is okay, um, and I'd give it a grade right now, as a, you know, 2024 of a B minus, maybe a C plus, only because of how much nicer newer kits and sculpts have become in the past decade. Um, I know I wasn't a fan of some of the orangutan arms in the kit, but for a big block of guys, as in the unit you've just seen, uh, on the table, all painted up, they do the job really well, I reckon. Here's the first unit I did for the army. They are also Warlord. The link to the video of this unit is below, but just to recap briefly, I used all 40 guys here, except, well, 39, except for this guy in the back here, who was replaced by a rock, not an Athenian one. Uh, I mixed the figure types and tried to make it into one giant unit. It was a bit of a newbie mistake, I've got to admit. Um, we've got the linen and bronze crassier here. We've got some linen ones here. The bronze are here in the front. Um, and uh, I did have a problem, and, and, and the unarmored guys are sort of in the back here. Now, I did have a problem getting them all sort of to line up, and again, that was a bit of a newbie problem. Uh, I should have been more careful and paid more attention to which arms complement which figures and which combinations lined up well with others. Now, here's where I use the white lambdas on the crimson shields, and it turned out well enough. The, the shields are different sizes as well, so you have to keep that in mind to get them all well based, because it was a bit of a problem at times, once or twice in, in lining them all up. When you got 40 figures on there, it can be a problem. Now, uh, again, I did use a majority of the uh, Pilos or Pylos helmets uh, for the guys. With a few exceptions, there is a ginger guy in the back. He's the guy with the rock. Uh, he's the one cracking jokes and complaining about the intensity of the Peloponnesian sun. Here's the big block of Victrix Spartans. I really enjoyed working on these and found the sculpts and poses to be superior to the older Warlord ones. Here, the shields are white with the crimson lambda, and they are all pretty much rocking the Pylos helmet in the standard planopy of spear, short sword, and shield. Uh, I found out that these ranked up a lot easier than the Warlord ones, but there were a bit more fiddly in some regards. So, for example, um, you can't really see it so much because they're facing you, but uh, the heads had separate mullets uh, or, or long hair that only went with certain heads, and some of the heads and hairstyles didn't really go on to certain bodies. Also, you had to be careful with the sleeves and sleeveless arms. I'll just turn it here so maybe you can see, for example, okay, we've got a sleeveless arm here, we've got an arm with sleeves, sleeves, sleeveless, okay? Um, so I did make a few mistakes, and there are a few in there for sure, you know, um, and it did creep up from time to time. Also, the shields were separate, which was a bit of a double-edged sword. Let me just get these guys a little bit more centered here. Um, um, but it was easier paint, but the chances of messing up with the gluing did increase. Now, I'll mention the painting at this point. Uh, for all the models in the entire army here, the primer I used was a Mr. Hobby Mahogany Brown. Now, the flesh started out base color as a dark maroon with a highlight of shading fresh. Flesh, pardon me. Uh, I've been in Japan so long, my L's and R's become the same, uh, which would be a, a dwarven flesh. Uh, then it was given a lighter highlight flesh color, maybe an L flesh color, okay? And that was given a brick red wash, and then once that was all dry, the flesh was given a lighter flesh wash, uh, pardon me, flesh highlight again. Now, the crimson tunic started out with dark maroon, highlighted up with the brick red, uh, and then they were given a dark chocolate brown wash, and then a final highlight of crimson. The actual name of the paint is called Tuscan Red. Uh, it is an Americana craft paint available at Michael's if you live in Canada or the United States. Uh, they have a lot of paints there, pretty cheap compared to GW and others. Now, the linen armor carasses was a beige color over the primer, given a dark chocolate brown wash, and once that was dry, it was gone over again with the base color. Uh, the leather boots and spear shafts were uh, base straight brown, uh, and then highlighted with a sable brown, and then given that dark chocolate brown wash. Uh, and then re-highlighted with the base. So basically what I did is I got the figure base coated and highlighted up, you know, one or two levels to where I wanted it, and then gave it a dark chocolate brown wash, and then went over and redid the highest highlight. Uh, the bronze uh, here, as you can see on the, a lot of the helmets, uh, was an antique gold metallic wash with an avocado olive green, and then re-highlighted it well. Uh, again, sorry, Sumas in. Oh man, that was Japanese. Sumo Sammy's, excuse me. Again, I did the bases and the movement trays all using plastic card. 
using a few of the extra Victrix figures. I made a three-man command stand. Um, the good thing about uh, Victrix, you get a set of 48 minis. There are a lot of extra options there for you, and you can make some command units. So uh, I went with these two sort of high-ranking uh, members of society with the black shields and the white lambdas. Um, we've got this guy here with the lighter hair, possibly a descendant of Menelaus from the Iliad. Uh, the musician here in the back, he just sort of rounds out the bass. And some of these rocks here are from Athens as well. There's a link to the video in which I talk about these guys at length in the description below. The final unit, or units, are the cavalry. Uh, these guys are my in my last Ancients update from about a month or so ago. Now I have them situated that they can be uh, one large unit as you see here, or they can be in two smaller units. Uh, and I had a blast, honestly, looking at uh, pictures of different types of horses. I mean, every guy is basically the same. You know, this guy's got a hat, this guy's got a plume, but uh, every guy's basically the same. So the horses allowed you to, 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 you know, mix the unit up, give them a little bit more of a personality. Now, in my last video uh, for the War Mutts Challenge, I, I showed some Republican Romans that I just finished last month. And uh, I do have some Roman cavalry uh, that I'll be working on once all my bold action projects are out of the way here. Uh, so let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in seeing how to paint up different types of horses. Now, again, a video dedicated solely to these guys is below. Uh, it is a bit of a kit bash. I did use the Warlord uh, Pylos helmets here on these guys. Uh, but other than that, they're pretty straightforward. These are Victrix. Uh, again, uh, the bases and the movement trays were uh, all made of plastic card by me. So here it is, the whole army, three phalanxes, one unit of skirmishers, one or two units of cavalry, and two command stands for a total number of 150 guys. Um, I do have a little bit of an addition to this army, which uh, will come up probably in the new year once I get through uh, all my bold action projects, which might be an alternate command stand uh, of three or four figures. Well, I hope you like the army. Thank you very much for watching the video. A like, comment, and subscribe. Nailed it. And I will catch you in another video. Until then, have a good one and keep those brushes moving. Adios, amigos. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye. Bit of an epilogue here from my buddy Kev who asked me about making videos and I told him don't drink before you film. It didn't follow my own advice. I think I've had three or four beers. I tried to film this thing, Kev. God damn it, dude. It was all take 7,000. So here you go. You got Private Tom Slater, the third army fighting in the Battle of the Balls. Be taking the cover, battle brother. All right, dude. Take it easy. Bye-bye.